Okay. Um, <clears throat> first of all, on this occasion, uh, wardrobe is Joe, my friend from Brazil, and this is Floripa, which is a lovely beach where Joe lives in Brazil. Very nice. Now you may ask, what am I doing wearing a Brazilian t-shirt when I'm about to read an Australian poem? Good question, which I'm not in a position to answer just at the moment. But while I'm here, I thought in my office, I thought you might want to have a look around. I mean, if you were to walk into this room, you'd look around. So why not? Now, this is not terribly professional, but... Um, this is the best way I can do it. Now, um, over, over here, well, that's my bedroom uh, in that room over there. That's my bedroom. Uh, but actually, my bed is that end. That, the, the little white thing you can see there, that's a porta potty. I haven't used it yet. Um, over here is the far wall and uh, there's a set I can't understand why I'm not getting this straight oh, there we go um, a fan at, which is running because it's bloody hot it's the middle of the summer here that is um, a set of Encyclopedia Britannica leather bound and the whole thing I never use it but it looks nice in the bookcase and everything and a Above that, sitting on top, is an old valve radio, which actually works. And on top of that is the cover for my laptop. This chair, or that's the spare room over there, which I just used to store junk. This chair is part of a lounge suite, which belonged to my parents years and years and years ago. And I first sat in that chair when I was 15, which is about 50 years ago. And I've still got it. And it's my favourite chair. I love it to pieces. This is an old fireplace with a mantelpiece and uh, an old gas heater, which is not used, and my stereo, uh, which is rarely used. And on the, the mantelpiece there, a couple of old swagons, another old radio, and a couple of pictures of my mate Cody, and a bit of this and that. And over this way, no, 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 where am I? <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, there we are. If I just get out of the way for a minute, that's my bicycle, uh, which has got flat tyres and which I <laughs> think is a wonderful excuse not to ride it. But it sits there and in the office, my company vehicle, I suppose you could call it. And if I just wander this way, if this lead is long enough and it's all why do these leads get tied up in knots I don't know but this is um, yes that's my desk that's my desk with the laptop and the old uh, desktop and um, the chair which is a but everything in this room is an absolute disgrace and and um, my old TV and the uh, filing cabinet and um, the storage ship storage shelves <laughs> with a whole lot of I mean it's it's an absolute disgrace and I should be thoroughly ashamed of myself um, so that's about it really so I'll just sit down and try to get this camera back where it's supposed to be over here and uh Oh, is that all right? I saw it sort of go a little blurry for a minute there. Anyway, um, so now that you've had a look around, I should read this poem. And the, one of the reasons I showed you that old chair and everything is because that chair was around about the same time that uh, we got our first television when I lived with my parents in Sydney. And this poem is called His Master's Voice. Our neighbours we beat to be first in the street to have an antenna erected. 
High on our roof stood proudly the proof of a brand new TV, they suspected. It was an HMV with movies to see on 21 inches of screen. My family was glued to this newfangled tube and the neighbour's envy was green. In shillings and pounds, it costs around 200 guineas, in fact. 20 weeks wages. That seemed like ages, and money was something we lacked. Our neighbour that day bought a brand new FJ, a thousand quids worth of car. But his master's voice remained our choice, and outshone the Holden by far. I was just a boy when we got our new toy in 1956. Twelve years old, couldn't be told. A kid up to his usual tricks. Marshal Matt Dillon tracked down the villain in one of my faves, Gunsmoke. Hugh O'Brien, another hero of mine, played that white herb bloke. Dennis Weaver, Leave It to Beaver, so many names to recall. But I'd even sit and watch the pattern that tested the reception and all. Lucille Ball, I remember them all. People like Dick Van Dyke. Jackie Gleason ran many a season. Bonanza, Cheyenne and the like. Each day after five, my dad would arrive and on would go the TV. We ate our supper, washed down with a cuppa. But, uh, something's gone on. What? Install two items. Quit. Oh, I'm in the middle of reading a bloody poem. And this bloody thing comes on. I don't believe these computers. Fair ink. Playhouse. Where was I? Each day. <laughs> Each day after five, my dad would arrive and on would go the TV. We ate our supper, washed down with a cuppa in front of the HMV. It was 64 when the singing Fab Four landed at Kingsford Smith. We watched it live as the Beatles arrived and reality overtook myth. A few years later, it was even greater. One small step for a man. Apollo 11 had conquered the heavens as Galileo had planned. Through laughter and tears for 21 years, we watched that old TV, plain black and white. But that was all right. What a wonderful memory. I was trying to get the cursor thing, to, you know, to sort of go out with a really dramatic sort of see you later, curtain down and but that didn't work because the cursor, because I'd moved the cursor to get rid of that stupid thing that happened on the screen a while ago. <sighs> Let's do it again. Through laughter and tears for 21 years, we watched that old TV plain black and white. But that was all right. What a priceless memory. <laughs>